and I am beginning to get to smell in dreams. It's almost yeah. like a lag. So you actually, yeah. it's like a mental note then. Yes. Naturally, you're not smelling, yes. you know what I mean, do you? Yes, yes. That's, that's very interesting, that is. Yeah. I mean, it's quite amazing going into work from the train and you suddenly notice how some people haven't washed as much. Uh, or I didn't know my pipe smelt like that. Or uh, <laughs> that, te- that red wine tastes very nice indeed. Okay. And, and so you might use your senses in a dream. Some people might have that. Some might have, um, um, shall we say, a sense of touch. Or they might have a sense of fear. Feeling it physically in the body. Yeah, actually, um, emotion. Yeah. Uh, young men who get particularly excited in their early adolescence with sexual dreams, well, perhaps it was just me, so I'm exposed myself on, the, on here, usually woke up just before the crucial part. Um, so, you know, sometimes your dreams don't. Yeah, yeah. Know. So your dreams obviously reveal a lot about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you might also find blind people have dreams. That's interesting. Uh, which is an interesting one. I, 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 I knew somebody who had been blind from birth and they told me they dreamt. And I said to them, how can they, how can they dream? But you see, the problem was, I, who am sighted, mm. would find it very difficult to be explained how you would know you're dreaming if you couldn't see. Yeah. If you perhaps... That's what I could, but I, we couldn't find a common language yeah. to explore that. It's very interesting, that, yeah. because, like you say, you think, you said, blind from birth. Yes. Never been able to visually see anything. Yes. Only be able to hear it through yes. that computer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If it's, I think the angle we get into next is, if they've been sighted for a period of time. That's right. They were seeing certain things, trees, That's objects, right. so on and so forth. Okay. Yeah. How do you I mean, if you'd never known what the colour red was, how would you describe it to somebody? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. There was some research done that where somebody said it was a warm colour. Okay. But, but they've never seen the colour red. Helen Keller, who was born, I think she was deaf, dumb, and blind, recovered her hearing and her voice. And she said in, a, in an article that when she first spoke, she said, but to her, as it was if a voice echoed, this sound echoed all around her. So dreams, yeah, and our own perceptions <coughs> are very, very important, but they're only how we perceive. To get our own perception on them. Mm. I mean, there is, there is a tribe in Southeast Asia called the Sino tribe. I think they've been wiped out, unfortunately. But they were the most placid, peaceful people ever. And they used to teach their children um, how to handle dreams. And they used to talk about their dreams at breakfast time, whatever, yeah. Mm. And they would be taught that if they were scared, they were to attack the creature that frightened them or the situation. And if they felt overwhelmed, to call for their friends. The other, um, the other thing was, they were also taught to, um, once they'd beaten the creature, or the thing, to ask for a gift and forgive it. Okay. And they also were taught, advance towards pleasure. Now, I, I don't know what that means, but you, know, you can imagine a very rich uh, yeah. dream life. Now, those people had a society where there was virtually no violence, there was no psychological trauma. They got on with everybody, and the tribes around them were terrified because they thought they were witch doctors, and and they had, uh, and, and and the society brought the children up in that way, the Sino Dream Method. Very interesting. Which is, I mean, you can look that up on the net. The yeah, Sino Dream Method. Yeah, we could talk uh, later on. Yeah. The yeah. And yeah. I mean, there's some excellent books by Anne Faraday called The Dream Game, which are well worth looking at. We'll have to. Uh, uh, and if you have a dream. In some therapy sessions, I've got people to talk to characters in the dream, yeah? And then you pretend you're that character, mm-hmm. and you're beginning to access things like that. Putting dreams in our yeah. part. That's right. Well, so, so definitely worth it. I'm going to put yeah. it on. Yeah. And we're going to Amazon something. Yeah, and Faraday. Yeah. The dream game and... Oh, what else is good? Definitely. Very interesting stuff. 
I think uh, to wrap up, I've got a very interesting topic here. Um, I hope people are interested in this. It's something I think I've been talking to you for a while. Yes. Out of body experiences, I know it's, it's, it's sort of dream ish. Yes. I mean, what I want to do is draw the dream link with parapsychology. Um, <clears throat> when we dream, we are operating in a very different sort of way. Mm -hmm. um, we're learning that we are not just our body. We seem to exist as a figure outside of our body. Yeah. So, out of the body experiences frequently occur in dreams. We can dream we fly. We dream we can do all different sorts of things. Um, it gives us a view of another way of looking at the world. Um, and if we can learn to lucidly dream, where we are aware and alive in our dreams, if you like, perceiving the world, then that asks some interesting sorts of questions about the soul, about evidence for survival after death, about the ability to just look from different perspectives. So, out of the body experiences, we, we seem to drift off into a world where we see things differently and experience things differently. Yeah? Yeah. So, uh, learning to dream properly and to control it begins us to ask the question from the film The Matrix, uh, how do we know? Can we trust our senses? Is this a dream? It's real and reality type thing. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> There's no Chinese yeah. saying, uh, a man dreamt he was a butterfly dreaming he was a man. Who okay. Is the, who is the dreamer? Yeah. Yeah. Is this reality here simply a dream? Because we've invested so much stuff in it. Fair enough. You know? Yeah. I mean, we look at that film Inception. I feel like that's it's about oh. dream within a dream within yeah. a dream. It's really, uh, you have to watch it about three or four yeah. times to get yeah. any sense of it. I mean, it was very matrix -y, so. It is, yes, but it's how you influence yeah. how you influence those things. Yeah. Yeah. So dreams give us a very interesting way of looking at the world differently. So relevance of parapsychology is the ability to understand the world in a different way. Okay. What is the dream? So again down to yeah, are hauntings other people dreaming? Are they, you know so if time is circular according to Einstein, um, then yeah. Who knows what we're seeing? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. So, some people have sensed... I mean, there are lots of recordings of where people have um, seen things like um, figures from a different age. Yeah. Is that the dream time of a different period? Mm -hmm. You know, there's all sorts of speculations like that. Mm. I've got a book here. I don't know if I think I might have talked to you about it before. Yeah. been reading it on my office. It was, it was Dad's like. And um, it was about this case study they did back in the 1970s yes. about this, they were doing controlled experiments yes. with other body experiences. Yes. Now, say you would be the person yes. and I would do the actual yes. experiment, I, well, I would leave my body. Yes. But the doctor would go off and put something in the warehouse, okay? <coughs> yes. And we wouldn't tell the patient yes. or the actual experiment yes. where this would be. Mm. The following morning he'd get up and the patient would go back to the doctor and actually say, well look, that book you left down, I don't That's know, right. say section H, yes. top shelf. Yes. Now, how viable would you say something like this would be? Well, I do know that research has been done with people who have had near-death experiences. And there was an experiment done not so long ago where things were printed up, put on the ceiling. Mm. And people who, who'd had out-of-body experiences looked down, saw themselves, and looked up and saw what was there. When questioned, they got that precisely right. But they could not um, they could not have seen that from where they were. Do you think with near death experiences with yes. the body, do you think it's the body's way then of protecting itself from shock or do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. I mean we do know that when we have an accident, everything seems to slow down. Yeah, you see things more vividly. Yeah. Um, it may be that um, that's what's happening in and out of the body experience. There are, there are not only traumas, there are people who can meditate and mm. sort of visualise themselves standing there and then look back and see themselves. 
um, there are cases where people have, um, if you like, seen relatives of theirs just before they died, at that precise moment. There's an old story, there's an old tradition that goes back thousands of years, that what an astral body, if you want to call it, is, is linked to the physical body, a silver cord. When we dream, they try to explain it by saying that the silver cord is attached and we just wander. So when we, when we nearly die, mm. the silver cord becomes frayed and that death, the tradition is that that cord is cut. So like the umbilical uh, cord? Is that yeah, it's like an umbilical cord. Yeah. Yeah, precisely. And it, 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 it's, it's interesting that that's yeah. Yeah, it's just like it's the umbilical just, cord in a different sort of way. Yes, yeah, it's good, good uh, streams there. Yeah. And you have situations where people have premonitions not to do something or wake up with a terrible feeling. Mm. I feel like the positive feeling is something good is really going to happen. And it may be that when we're processing all this stuff, dreams and whatever, this may be the explanation for, for um, premonitions, for um, omens and whatever all different ways of sensing what's going on. Okay. So the dream is very important. It might have sounded very psychological this week, but respecting your dreams is an important way to make emotional empathy with other people and to think about how you think about the world. If you think the world is dull, boring, grey, with no rush with no imagination in it, your dreams are going to be like that. If you learn to look at your creativity through your dreams, you see things in a different sort of way. It may simply be that the origin of all parapsychological belief, all religion or spirituality, originated in the area of the dreams. Yeah? It's where people believe the gods or the spirits or their ancestors talk to them. Mm. There's a long, old tradition. In the Old Testament, um, the dreams are very frequent. In the New Testament, modern Christianity tended to think dreams were all about yeah. being tempted. To Temptation. And, and, not, uh, and it's, it's gone, and we don't respect the dreams. But if you go to tribal cultures, if you go to ancient cultures, if you were to speak to a shamanic friend from last week, he would emphasize that dreams are important. And in lots of North American Indian societies, in Siberian Tonga society, you had a big dream when you became an adult. And that's how you knew your life path. Um, years ago, when I was trained to be a therapist, or so I, where it was, I came to a crossroads. And at the crossroads was a creature. It had a human head, a snake's body, and wings. On its head was a crown, and it was tail. I thought, should I walk past it? It's like a challenge to me. And I recognised it when I woke up. I didn't walk past it. I was like, um, did I really want to do this stuff? <laughs> and I'd say I did. Yeah. Years later, I came across a picture of this being in a book on Indian mythology. I have no knowledge of Indian mythology at all at that point. I do now. Yeah. It was called a spirit now. Do you believe that was then like a... I don't know, uh, force, would you say foresight? Well, Possibly. a lot of people who've uh, I've told about it have said it was my spirit guide. Um, uh, so it could be my spirit guide, it could be many things, but certainly keeps me safe and has got me out of lots of trouble. 